between April and September. Expect to see tight, close quarter racing. The Porsche eSport Supercar. Andrew revs rise. Green flag drops away we go then for the feature race here in the Porsche Esports Super Cup and it's a great start once again from Martin Croquet, look at Jared Philsell down the inside into turn number one there, he's got the jump on Greg Ahutu, that's exactly what he needed after being stuck behind him for so long. One man has taken it back to the pits, it's David Nevakovsky, so not the ideal start to the championship for him that he needed but across the line then, first lap completed, Matt Croquet, Jared Philsell, Greg Ahutu, Joshua Rogers up in fourth place now. Patrick Holtzman and Alexander Thebe round at the top six. So there are drivers who have been making their way through the field. There are some battered and bruised cars out there, but they're still in the race. They're still in contention. But this longer race here is going to be more of a mental game. You're not maybe not going to see quite as uh, dramatic or desperate moves as we saw in that set. Uh, that's at sprint race earlier on but look at this battle line Graham Carroll he's got Alexander Thebe in front of him and he's got De uh, he's also got Maximum Beneke behind him so it's two Germans and a British driver there in battle at the moment as they're going through the right hander into the S's now and Carroll he didn't have the best of rounds at Barber but this this time out here at Mid Ohio he's having a better showing here Connor Yep, he is up into P7 after starting in P9 in this event. That was somewhat helped due, due to all the dramas that happened ahead of him that he didn't get caught up in. So he's able, he was able to pick his way through that wreck in turn two and got himself into a good position as a result. And now locked onto the back of Alexander Thieb on the run down towards uh, turn one. And turn one can be particularly sketchy because you can actually get two of your tires on that inside curb there and still be relatively okay. But if you take a little bit too much out of it, then that's gonna be a bigger issue as we're yeah. gonna go up on for B1 there. That is gonna be Phil Cell versus Kronke through the keyhole. Phil Cell looks to get the run off the corner he has the slipstream, looks left, looks right, looks left again. And now Phil Sell will look to commit around the outside at China Beach. Turn four, does he complete the move? Hard on the brakes he goes, side by side with your race leader through the S's section. He's going to get run out of road. No, he's able to hold the inside up over the crest. Fantastic battling here, Paul. It's, it is fantastic. He got a great run through the keyhole that's for sure he's down the inside but he's got the outside here for turns eight and nine it's not the ideal oh. place to be onto the grass he goes and look who's through it's kirka hutu around goes phil cell also almost hopefully he doesn't collect anyone when he rejoins he doesn't do that so that's good but that just goes to show how tricky it is look at that just he was given room that's the crucial thing there he was given room by martin Kronke, but because he was off wide on the dirty line there he lost control got a wheel onto the grass and that's all it takes yeah that's an absolutely brilliant effort there uh from phil cell unfortunately he pays the price when it comes to that middle sector and now it's going to be martin Kronke and gregor hutu that are going to be leading the pack around and joshua rogers despite being involved in that first lap incident at turn two he's got himself onto that third step of the podium and despite that little bit of bodywork damage he has to his Porsche, it still seems rather competitive well, as they head on down to the China Beach section once again, battling first, second and third, this close together once again. We're only five minutes into this race already. And Gregor Hutu is showing that he means business. He wants to get a win here in this feature race, but he's coming under intense pressure now by the Australian Joshua Rogers. It's Finland versus Australia here on the iRace and Esports Network. And I tell you what, these drivers, they will keep on pushing and keep on challenging each other all the way through. As we head on into turn 11, the fast, relatively fast left-hander when you come to this track and then onto the brakes then for the carousel. Not able to make any moves for the time being as we look back to that battle and it is Graham Carroll 
uh, I believe, as well as uh, one of the, uh, we'll get a replay up on the screen here, and Yao Vaz has been involved in an instant, Ooh. oh, and into the back of him, went Ooh. one of the Apex Ooh. Racing Team cars, he's collected, I believe that would have been uh, Umashima is collected, so not good, we've got battling for, well, all the way down your field here, you've got battling for the lead, you've got battling for sixth place, it's fantastic action, and tell you what, Kronke has made a little bit of a breakaway at the front there, he's gained about six tenths over the rest of them, but look at this, Carroll in the slipstream, sixth position for the Red Bull driver, onto the brakes, into the right-hander, not able to make any moves just as yet, but the pressure is building, and in this longer race, when tyre uh, management is crucial, Connery, maybe just pushing that driver in front to make them use their tyres up a bit more will come into effect later on. Yeah, so we'll keep track with, of that one as a storyline throughout this race. Battling just outside of your top 10, though, that's going to be Alejandro Sanchez versus Jared Filsell. And this is exactly how far Jared Filsell has fallen back after challenging for the race lead, getting, well, in some people's view, crowded off the racing circuit by Martin Kronke. And now he's just fighting for points positions that are very much inferior to the ones he was fighting for a little bit earlier on in this race. So a bit of a recovery drive has to go on here for Jared Phil Sell. There's still a close battle for P2. And in fact, actually, Gregor Hutu went slightly defensive into the keyhole. Here comes Rogers then. Battle for P2 going on up on your screens for you now. What an aggressive move for Rogers. They will take it side by side. It's a drag race coming down the back straight between Young and I would have to say old as well for Gregor Hutu. Hutu on the outside line for the Finn. The Australian of Rogers on the inside for turn four. Can Rogers complete the move? He can take a bow. That was great stuff from Joshua. Put his nose in there, made Hutu run wide. It compromised his run, and that's exactly what he needed to do. I thought Hutu would be able to maybe just get a little bit of a, uh, a run out of the corner, but it just should. Having that inside line worked well, but it was a great little dummy there of making it look down the outside and then light break move down the inside and Rogers is through and I would imagine he'll pull away now and his next target will be Martin Kronke, the man in the lead. Joshua Rogers wants to make it two feature race wins out of two and that's exactly what he's going to try here. Sebastian Job though at the back end of your top 10. He's battling with Tommy Ostgaard, with David Williams and also Max Eke there in front of him. So those drivers all together in the field and looking further back there Jamie Fluke 15th for Jamie uh, down your field and uh, well is certainly making a move Ooh. there that's uh, that's on the uh, oh Sebastian Job has had an instant look at him he's coming back onto the track right there in front of us and uh, Job what I don't know what P3. happened there at uh, the key keyhole but looking at Pete number three as Ooh. well there's action all over this track here. It's fantastic <laughs> to see in this one. Hutu now under serious pressure from Patrick Holtzman there in that fourth place. So Hutu trying to hang on to a podium position here. But this longer race is giving people the opportunity to move forward if they maybe are just that little tenth or two quicker here, Connery. Certainly seems to be the case. It's going to be Patrick Holtzman going to be on the back of Gregor Hutu. And last time around, Hutu actually overcooked the entry to turn two, which gave the opportunity away to Patrick Holtzman to try and sense for a move down the back straight and then into four. But he was unsuccessful this time. There's also another Red Bull driver involved in the battle. That's Graham Carroll and Alexander Thebe as well. So these two battling pairs all together as they head their way through turn one. Hutu's able to pull out a gap right just a couple of cars further down the line, so he won't be under threat this time into turn two. But this is absolutely fantastic stuff here. Coming through the turn two, Carroll for the inside over Phoebe. He gets a bit of oversteer off the corner, and again, it's going to be a battle down to four. 
Yeah, so Carroll then, he's got the inside line for China Beach. And I tell you what, he's got a good run of it as well. He might actually make this move before the corner on the brakes. You can see the car squirreling there, moving about on the braking, but great drive from Graham Carroll. The Scotsman, he won't like me calling him British too much. He's a Scotsman <laughs> and a proud Scotsman at that. He's up in fifth place now at the moment. He'll be setting his sights on his teammate uh, in front of him, Patrick Holtzman. So uh, there's, as, even though there are teams in this in this series, it, you are all out for yourself at the end of the day. Yeah, no constructors, no constructors, no team championships to be concerned about. It's the drivers that win the prize money at the end of the day. And speaking of prize money, it looks like right now Kronke might just be able to take that one thousand dollars for a feature race win, but he is being chased down right now by Joshua Rogers. Rogers took two tenths of a second out of your race leader that last time by, and Rogers has plenty of time to work with. He wants another thousand dollars in the bank. Yep, so uh, as we are at the moment, the uh, standings are uh, Cronkay at the front with Rogers second, who to ahead of Holtzman, Carol Thebe, who you're seeing in front of us here, Max Beneke with David Williams, Brennan at the top eight, Tommy Oskard and Jared Philsell rounding out that top ten. Worth pointing out the drivers that are on pit road and have parked. Yao Vaz, Ricardo Castroledo, David Navakovsky, Lauren Heinrich, and here's the big one, Mitchell de Jong in that first lap incident out of the race. Big, big ramifications there for Mitchell. Yeah, absolutely huge for a driver that was challenging for podium positions in the first round of the championship. He will score next to nothing here in the second round. And uh, with only about 12, uh, 10 rounds to go, well, well, in this entire series, excuse me, then that is a pretty big chunk of points to be losing coming towards that latter portion of the season, of course, when you start to calculate who could possibly win the championship and what they would need to do to be able to do so. You'll be certainly hoping, hoping that he would have had a better performance here today if it comes down to the wire at the end of the season. Gap towards your race leader, though, from the perspective of second place. Well, it's a six and a half tenths of a second right now, and Rogers took another tenth of a second out on that last lap. So Rogers making huge, huge in roads it might just be vrs kuana sport action p1 p2 in just a couple of laps time i'll tell you what even though they are teammates they uh, they certainly won't be giving each other any room that's for sure kevin ellis jr we're on board here the uh, british driver versus the spaniard alejandro sanchez and this is a battle for 11th and 12th place ellis jr got the run there you can see the damage on sanchez's car uh, from on the front end of his car so he's going to be going that little bit slower here and uh, maybe just acting as a little bit of a bottleneck in the field because you can see the queue of cars behind him there on the screen so uh, definitely these drivers are pushing on behind them as well we've got further battle and Jamie Fluke trying to get a bit of a, uh, a recovery drive on here in 15th and he's uh, behind uh, Thomas Tahala uh, in 14th, so uh, the Finn versus the British driver, or Northern Irish driver, I'm going to say. Um, I, I tell you what, this is going to get very confusing for me, but looking at the front, Joshua Rogers once again quicker that last lap. He's been gaining lap on lap to the front there. Tenth, a tenth, and then two tenths that last lap. But catching is one thing, passing is very much a different matter. That is the phrase that we like to use. You can see on the lap time deltas in the bottom right hand side of the screen, the time that has been eroded away by the Australian. Two tenths of a second again on that last lap brings it to within three tenths of a second. But, you know, Martin Kronke, one of the most fiercest defenders of position in this entire championship. What will happen when it's his teammate trying to hound him for position? Wow, this is it. I think there'll be a little, uh, a little bit more room given to each other uh, in this one. Speaking Ooh. of room being given, look at this. Fluke and Tahala through China Beach. And it's going to be Fluke down the inside of this portion. Oh, oh and almost a little bit of contact. Fluke, can he hang on to it? Yes, he does. Another bang of doors. 
through the right hander and look at that the seventh car is coming up and then even more drama because the rest of the field is coming through on them here and the seven what a move Jeremy Bootloop to gain two positions there on those two battling away and that just goes to show that if you battle too hard you can end up losing ground and Fluke now is in danger of getting left out to dry there Tyler trying to make his way back. We'll see it up on the replay. Look at this opportunistic move there for Bulip. Sees the contact between the two cars ahead of him. Finds a line on the inside that just opens up for him there. And he's able to get the power down as well. Fantastic performance for the Frenchman. But on the live pictures, this battle has not ended. Tatella now in a battle with Marin Chulak heading their way through turn two. There are your race leaders heading their way down the back shape. But look at this huge gaggle of machines heading their way through turn two. And the exit coming up onto the back straight side by side between Tolak and Tatella. Yeah, those two are going to be battling away down into the right-hander at China Beach, but things are getting starting to get intense at the front of the field. I mean, they're intense in the oh. mid-pack there as you look at how close they're all getting in that mid-pack through China Beach. You can see how they uh, swap over from one corner to the next. Great side-by-side -side driving from them and eventually makes it through to us to Hala. So Sedgwick not able to make the move in that one, but certainly really, really close action there in your mid-pack. But look at the front of the field then. The two leaders are together. Joshua Rogers, slight bit of damage on the front of his car. It will affect his top speed, but top speed isn't a key factor here at this track. It's about how your car handles and how your car brakes and how it looks after its tyres as well. As we have mentioned, track temperatures are in the mid-40s centigrade. That'll be uh, about 115 Fahrenheit for those uh, Americans out there but look at the run that Rogers gets then he's got the slipstream here he's going to have to go to the outside though because it's M Martin Kronke will not show him the inside line here on the brakes hard late braking round the outside you can hold it round there because he got the inside for the next left hander but Kronke keep it out there because he got the inside for the next couple of corners and that's exactly what he's doing can Rogers get the cut back here no he can't he's gonna have to fall back in line once again but he's already set his stall out here Connery he wants that lead Yep, he does, and coming towards the latter sector now, again, this isn't really a place where you can get the move done, but it looks like Rogers is miles faster than uh, Kronke right now, and I think it's only going to be a matter of time before he makes his way through to the race lead, but Martin Kronke, he has to channel the years and years and years of experience he has here in iRacing to try and keep his teammate behind through turn one line up the run here for rogers perhaps up into turn two he is in a position but does he decide to go this early he does outside line it looks like look for that wide line look for the momentum off the corner because martin Kronke will be slower in that section of the track and here we go rogers with the run out of the corner with the slipstream as well he'll have another go at it coming into turn four yeah he's going for it. it's worth pointing out that those these two drivers half a second and slower than the gaggle behind so they don't need to fight too hard too much because they'll bring the rest of the field in with them rogers trying the cut back there on four into five not able to get the run but can he hold that inside line for six here they're giving each other room here Kronke getting on the power and just staying ahead but this is slowing each other down all of this battling is just slowing each other down they should be working together to try and pull out a bit more of a gap over that gaggle behind because Gregor Hutu, Patrick Holtzman and Graham Carroll they want a piece of this action as we look at a replay for Alejandro Sanchez and that's him in a battle and he's just look, got onto the dirt there got onto the marbles lost out a bunch of time and uh, ended up well, only lost the one position there, but uh, yeah, Sanchez not having the best of days with that damage. But back to your race lead then. Kronke climbing over the curb, whereas Rogers, he doesn't do that. Into the keyhole. We've seen Rogers pull out the moves here into this corner. It's too far back though to make the move this time around. And again, four tenths of a second slower than the drivers behind them. So they've got about two seconds behind them gap. 
between Rogers and Hutu, but you can see there how this battling has just been slowing each other down here. Yeah, it has, and if they continue on for another couple of laps like this, then Gregor Hutu can bring himself back into contention. You can also say the same for Patrick Holtzman and Graham Carroll as well. So this two-car battle for the race lead, if this is prolonged, might just become a five-plus car battle for the race lead right at the end of this race. You can see, just see Kevin Ellis Jr. outside the top ten trying to harass the back of the driver of, I believe it was Jared Filsell no, uh, at the front Job. of the field. No, that's Sebastian Job who has made the pass complete over Kevin Ellis Jr. over the past lap or so. But with nine minutes remaining, race lead still undecided, podium position still undecided decided as well yeah absolutely so these drivers they're all battling out of course the podium finishers in this race here they all get a share get some money as well the winner will be a thousand dollars richer as will mentioned at the top of this race the second place and oh, third place get money as well look at the lead here then side by side joshua rogers he's gonna try and hold it around the outside if he can hold it around the outside he could get a better run on the power get on the power earlier he can't do that he's He's on the grass there he's almost going off track but he's gonna keep it to the left here so your race lead battle a two by two well two wide here in towards turn number four on the brakes once again we've seen how good rogers is on the brakes he's holding that outside line he's got the inside for the right and uh, the left hander here but Kronke crucially once again showing that experience showing that ability to place his car where he needs to is staying ahead for the time being but these two now I think Rogers is getting a little bit impatient with eight minutes remaining and Thebe uh, Thebe has gone off in the, the field you can see him spinning there he's had a big instant he's dropped down your field we'll have a look at the replay here Connery but uh, not ideal and I just imagine that he, yeah just a little bit of contact, contact. Yeah, contact with David Williams there, so uh, that is going to spin the German into the tyre barrier there. Was running in P7, will finish nowhere near that uh, as he gets himself back on circuit and he drops more positions. That car is not looking very healthy at all. Uh, David Williams still trying to continue on uh, the battling later on in that replay, but he has solidified himself ahead of Tommy Ustgard oh. here. Go on. Yeah, looking for the lead there was Joshua Rogers. And here we go. Hutu versus Holtzman. They're battling it out now. So we'll draw his attention to the blast step of the podium. If you end up in third place, you end up with $200 from this race. And, well, Holtzman wants that. He wants a bit of extra pocket money here as he goes down into that right-hander once again. But showing the outside line, Gregor Hutu. We saw that defensive driving from Gregor in that first race. Oh! Oh, that's a big contentious instant there. Hutu got in the brakes and Holtzman got into the back of Hutu. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's what has happened. Up in towards 10, 5 and 6. We'll get another look at it. Boop. Get out of the way, Hutu. I'm coming through. And that's something that will definitely be investigated after this race. Yeah, of course, with this series, it's not in-race stewarding. They have a panel of stewards look at the instance afterwards, so uh, you won't see any penalties in this race. But we will be sure to tell you about them at the start of next broadcast. But I tell you what, those two having that little incident, it's a Red Bull 3 and 4 then for Holtzman and Carroll. And Carroll's putting the pressure on his teammate, but up at the front as well we've got the pressure on there Rolf Rogers oh, running oh, really oh. out onto the grass there it is dangerous to do that because you can lose control so easily onto the brakes once again less than six minutes remaining in this one and Rogers trying to get the run out of the keyhole once again he's in the slipstream he's wanted to try and make this finished make sure he gets the win in this one but Kronke as we said ultra experienced sim racer he knows what he needs to do he's been in this position many a times in many series he can just position his car in the right place here connery and hold on to that lead yeah he's so used to leading world championship races previous so it's not exactly a foreign concept here for martin cronke 
as he tries to defend from his teammate. Jared Philsell again trying to make his way back up through the field after an earlier race incident. He currently has the driver of Tommy Ostgard on the front of his nose right now. That's the Norwegian driver just getting a little bit squirrely coming through the middle sector there, but everything seems to be okay with that VRS Commander Simsport Porsche as they follow their way through that final sector. Look at how closely Jared Philsell is following the, the uh, Norwegian ahead of him, and now he might just be able to get some sort of run coming through the first sector next time, and look at the line behind as well. Yeah, absolutely. Jack Sedgwick trying to race work lead. his way through and uh, yeah you're quite right to draw attention to the race lead because they're going side by side into the keyhole once again Rogers trying he's just trying desperately different moves to get past they've got enough of a gap behind them that they don't need to worry about third and fourth place now they can battle between the two of them and the Australian versus German battle is on once again and uh, Kronke at the front of this field has been in the lead of this race well, pretty much from the get-go. In fact, he was in the lead from pole position, and he is just trying everything he can, using all his experience and all of his knowledge and his racecraft to hold on to that lead. But Rogers, the uh, plucky Australian, the young lad who's uh, joined this team, he really is trying to make Kronke make a mistake. And do you know what? Most of these drivers are a young lad to me now. <laughs> Yeah, I'm the, I'm the youngest person in this contribute, I know that one for a fact, but there we go. Not the uh, uh, youngest person involved in this broadcast, if you include all the drivers, that is for certain as the battle continues for P1. There's a battle continuing further down the pack as well. As we watch Phil Sell still try to hound the back of Ostgard here, coming through the long right-hander, but again, no gap appearing. Ostgard got to make his way uh, to, uh, well, to Phil Sell, excuse me. Uh, to make his way through, coming up towards turn one again. That's not going to be a place where you can make things happen. Phil Sell again falling foul of the fact that he's fast in all the wrong places here. And with three minutes remaining, when does the desperation start? Well, I mean, <laughs> you got to ask that question. And, uh, well, I, I think desperation won't come into it for the lead two. And then the ones behind Phil Sell, oh, well, now there's a sign <laughs> then. The lights are flashing on Joshua Rogers' car. He wants by here. He's trying every little trick that he can pull out here to try and distract Martin Cronkite here as we go through the right-hander heading into the S's now. Cronkite, he can, he's been able to manage the pace at the front. He can look after his tyres. These drivers will be feeling the effects of the heat here today. We're heading towards the last couple of minutes. We've only got a couple of laps at remaining once they end this one. So time is running out for Rogers to make the move here. And you would have to say that his best position really will be into the keyhole. Yep, it's Will coming across the line this time. Looking at the time, it will be around about two laps to go here to sort out this battle for P1. Rogers very close coming through turn one, but he's been in this exact situation before, many times before, but he hasn't been able to complete the move just yet. Again, gesturing towards the outside, Rogers has been favoring this wide entry to turn two and late apex to try and maximize the speed coming down the back straight, but Kronke, he's just placing his car in all of the right places right now, so Rogers cannot find a gap to slot himself in looking for a move again into turn four outside line but the outbreaking isn't there for rogers so now he's starting to run out of time and run out of laps well this is it he's got about a lap and a half remaining in this one and will we see any desperation move come from it i don't think we will but you never know there's uh, money on the line for this one and these two are just absolute tooth and nail giving it absolutely everything it's great to see drivers on the limit here and speaking of on the limit Niles Kush down in 20th place battling out with Bobby Zelensky as well in that mid pack and it is very much a pack as well it's the US driver versus the German and they are heading through towards the carousel but we're on to the final lap of the race for the race leaders as we're heading in to that crucial point of the track once again heading in towards the keyhole and Rogers will be looking to make a move he's looking out there he's not close enough to make a move down the inside here 
I think if he doesn't make a move down the next straight into the right-hander that we will end up with this order unless something drastic happens but here we go in the slipstream once again down this straight then heading towards China Beach and these drivers they're pushing hard Rogers just not close enough to make that late braking maneuver and he's gonna run he's trying everything he's trying to get in the mirrors again trying to get do everything he can to get the win but Martin Kronke at the front is controlling where his car goes his car looks stable it looks very well planted as we're headed in towards the final few turns Tommy Oscar has dropped down I can see on the timing screen but we will keep an eye on this one because this is going right to the wire then into turn number 11 he's flashing the headlights is Rogers he wants by his teammate but Martin Kronke he's just got two corners to go here and it's going to be potentially a win here in the feature race the second feature race of the Porsche Respot Super Cup goes to Martin Kronke what a drive there from the front a masterful defensive driving 